Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Yes. You make me feel like I've been locked out of hell. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Rebel Hearts. This is your host, Christy Reeves. I am here to inspire you to become the change that you want to see in the world. And we have another amazing guest on today's show who's all about overcoming the limitations of our mind and teaching you how to live an inspired life. But before I introduce him, I want to share a couple of things with you that I have going on and that will be going on. Um, some of you might know I've been going to Germany twice a year, um, teaching classes on ancient wisdom and doing lectures over there. I've been traveling to Manila and teaching about ancient wisdom. And one of the things that I've been talking about is Celtic ancient wisdom and the, the wheel of the year and what it teaches us and how we can actually benefit from remembering and learning about the wheel of the year for our own mental and spiritual and even physical health. And there is something that we call the 12 sacred nights. And I, I know it's not super popular over here. I think most people I speak with don't even know about it. And what they say is on December 21st, which is our winter solstice, which is also the shortest day and the longest night, they would say in the ancient times that the wheel of time stood still for three days. And then the following 12 nights were a really, really special and a very sacred time. It wasn't a time to travel or really go out into the world, but to really go within and be still and nurture these seeds that, you know, and the seeds might be ideas or visions or something new that we want to create in the new year. And... Also in ancient times, there wasn't that judgment between light is good, darkness is bad, but everything was just part of creation. And darkness is actually the time to go within, to look at what has been, you know, sleeping within us, what is within us that wants to be expressed and really connect to that wisdom, really connect to that knowledge and really connect to these seeds. So during the 12 sacred nights, it's actually a time to, you know, look back at the old year and look what's worked for you and what's no longer working. Look at what you want to expand on and increase, but also really create that vision of what it is that you want to nurture, that seed that you want to nurture within you and really connect to that inner voice. And I feel sometimes in today's world, we get so busy and so overwhelmed and there's so much constant distraction that can show up. And also with our, you know, all our new technology and lighting and air conditioning and heating, we don't really connect to the cycles of the season. So bringing back that memory and that wisdom of the cycles of the season is actually really beneficial for our mental and emotional construct. So I'll be in Germany and I'll be teaching an online class about the 12 sacred nights. And if you go to christyreeves.com, you'll know what's going on and you can join us. It starts on December 24th for 12 nights and it's going to be really, really awesome. So I'm talking about really living an inspired life. Let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. His name is Peter Crone, and he's a thought leader in human potential and performance, as well as the founder and chief inspirer of Be Alive, Inc. Peter devotes his life to sharing insights, strategies, and products for people to live an inspired life and thrive by awakening new levels of awareness that transcend old and limiting mental constructs. He helps redesign the subconscious mind that drives human behavior and ultimately all performance. Whilst most people go through life as prisoners of their own mind, Peter helps expose and dissolve the mental shackles that hold people back so that they can experience true freedom and have their potential fully realized. Peter has worked with numerous VIPs in the entertainment industry, more than 100 professional athletes across multiple sports, as well as leaders of global organizations. His commitment is to sharing his pioneering mental constructs that inspire the realization of a new type of human being who shifts from existence of surviving to one of truly thriving. And Peter's also in a documentary called Heal that is currently airing in select theaters across the United States and will be available on DVD, I think, in December, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. So let me help 
uh, help me welcome Peter Crone over here. Yay! <laughs> it's the enthusiastic crowd. Yay! <laughs> I'm so excited to have you on today's show, Peter, because really looking at the concepts of our, ment of our mind and looking at you know, what we've been taught to believe mm -hmm. has been such a passion project of mine for many, many years. Beautiful. So I'm excited to speak with you about that. Yeah, love it. And I actually want to start with your own journey. What was, I don't know, the inspiration, the motivation? What was maybe a turning point in your life that got you onto that path? I think, you know, I think I could probably speak on behalf of any human being. There's mm -hmm. going to be a multitude of experiences that I've had that were very pivotal mm -hmm. in getting me to where I'm at. And when I say getting me to where I'm at, I'm really talking about a perspective, you know, not yeah. necessarily my external life, but really in the way I look at things. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most, the, the common thread throughout all of that is just curiosity, mm -hmm. pure curiosity, fascination with, for me particularly, why do people do what they do? Yeah. Um, I can remember when I was at school, sort of 19, 18, 19 years old, I would sit under a tree with a friend of mine called Guy. Mm -hmm. And um, Guy was a fascinating individual, even at that point. And now we're you know, talking a few years ago that this happened. And one of the things that struck me, and I always sort of remember about how he conducted his life, mm -hmm. he would only eat food that if you dropped it on the ground, it would eventually grow. <laughs> and that to me was like, first That's of all, amazing. like I, I had no idea how he could actually do that. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure it was 100% of the time, but I love the fact that he <laughs> looked at food like that, that mm -hmm. there was some inherent quality of potential, which, mm -hmm. you know, we could call prana or chi that would allow that food to have its own life. Mm. And so he and I would have fascinating conversations about the nature of consciousness and spirituality and mm -hmm. um that to me was sort of a very, that, that was a starting point, I think, for me in terms of this whole journey and this exploration mm -hmm. into some of the truths about life, like who mm -hmm. are we, why are we here, what's everyone doing? Um, so that was, definitely, that was definitely one of the starting points. Um, I would say since then, I mean, certainly as I got into my adult life, there's been so many events that as we all go through, have been traumatic or mm -hmm. not, not traumatic is a strong word, but you know, when we face adversity yeah. and for me, I think the theme has always been honestly um, a very common theme, which is of love and loss. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love love, you know, <laughs> and I love what it stands for, not in the mm -hmm. romantic sense, yeah. but really as a quality of energy, mm -hmm. which is all embracing, all accepting. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, my, my earliest experience of that was um, my mum passed when I was seven. Okay. Um, and then my dad passed when I was 17. Wow. So mm -hmm. before I'd even got to the apparent mm -hmm. adult age of mm -hmm. 18, that ripe mm -hmm. age that we apparently know stuff, um, you know, I was orphaned as mm -hmm. an only child. Mm -hmm. And that's not as a sob story, but really as part of my, my path to, at the time, become very, very vigilant. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the distinctions I teach people. I was mm -hmm. hyper observant, but at that point, because it was just me, I became vigilant. So mm -hmm. to me, the distinction I make is, being observant means you're very present and engaged with life. But being vigilant, you're very present and engaged with life, but with an undercurrent of fear. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, you know, it was really survival. Yeah. Um, and then I think through a cascade of events that happened over the next couple of decades, I learned that I'd actually not lost anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the whole story of loss yeah. just basically disintegrated. Wow. My parents had died. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's easy for me to say now because it's been a while. But, you know, when someone says, I'm sorry for your loss, I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I didn't mm -hmm. lose them. I wasn't mm -hmm. in a shopping mall and couldn't mm -hmm. find them. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, they passed. And mm -hmm. it's a, obviously I miss them. And that was mm -hmm. a difficult experience. But yeah. I think that really set the tone for much of my own exploration into mm -hmm. the things that we perceive that perhaps aren't actually the way they mm -hmm. are. Yeah. Um, I so, love that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really for me, my work is predominantly about shifting perception, not necessarily mm -hmm. circumstance. And mm -hmm. I think most people get preoccupied with trying to change circumstance. Yes. If my circumstances would be different, then I would be okay. Mm -hmm. And for me, I, I often quote Marcel Proust, who mm -hmm. you may be familiar with, mm -hmm. is a beautiful writer. And he had the quote, um, the journey of true discovery lies not in finding new lands, but in looking through new eyes. Um, I love that quote. That's beautiful. Yeah. So. Yeah. I give people new eyes mm -hmm. just without a mm -hmm. scalpel or any blood. Yeah. 
<laughs> Perfect. And I just <clears throat> love what you just said because so often we feel like we have to fix the circumstances mm -hmm. without realizing that we actually have to do an inner, I don't know, transformation or inner shift or realignment in order to shift whatever we're experiencing right now. Yeah. So how do you... I want to use the word uncover. Like, let's say someone comes to you and say, hey, this is, this is a pattern I've been running in my life. Or these are the circumstances I've been facing at the moment, the challenges. Mm -hmm. And I want to shift that. How do you help people uncover what their story is and help to realign them or get rid of that limited mental conditioning that they might have experienced? Um, I guess a lot of it depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are very, you know, easily accessible and they're ready mm -hmm. to make that change. Some people are going to be more resistant. Um, yeah. <laughs> most people <laughs> no, are more resistant. Yeah. Um, for me, whatever it is that they're sharing, whatever they mm -hmm. think they're going through, mm -hmm. and let's face it, as human beings, they're, they're, it's a pretty mm -hmm. limited list mm -hmm. of woes that people mm -hmm. have in common. You know, it's something to do with a relationship. It's something to do with their body, mm -hmm. something to do with their career or their finances. Uh, and that's pretty much what humans are sort of fundamentally mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah. So to answer your question, how do I do that? Whatever they come to me with their mm -hmm. problem, mm -hmm. to me is always simply an access to what is the world they live in internally that mm -hmm. has that occur like it's a problem. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, absolutely. So the problem is never the problem, mm -hmm. meaning whatever they're aware of is simply the symptom mm -hmm. of who they think they are yes. that has created the circumstance in the mm -hmm. first place. Mm -hmm. So they're not an actual victim of their circumstance. They've actually created them mm -hmm. um, through no fault of their own. It's often mm -hmm. an unconscious process. Yeah. But that then just in my ability to listen, helps me to reveal for them what is mm. the bigger world that you live in internally that has that occur like it's a problem. Because mm. mm. in my world, it may seem crazy, but there's actually no problems externally. Yeah, That's not to say that there is a lot of destruction, mm -hmm. and certainly mm -hmm. in the world that we live right now, there's mm -hmm. a huge amount of hostility mm -hmm. and violence yeah. that's going on. These are all actions that are byproducts of what's going on internally. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, like the, the the environment is our mirror that, of what is going on internally. Yeah, and it's yeah. also the access to find out where we're constrained, where mm -hmm. we're still living from a place mm -hmm. of fight or flight, survival. Mm -hmm. This fundamental feeling of competition. Yeah, um, trying to get somewhere, trying to become someone. Mm -hmm. You know, which creates all of this haste and urgency mm -hmm. and desperation, and where people will fundamentally just do whatever they have to to another human being to yeah. get to where they want to. Yeah. You know, and it's a, it's an old paradigm. Mm -hmm. It really is. And I think that's why so much of this stuff is coming to the surface so that it can be relinquished. And, yeah, absolutely. you know, not to sound too uh, Pollyanna-ish, but, you know, <laughs> to move into a, an arena of thriving mm -hmm. and, and love and unity. Um, absolutely, yeah. Perhaps seems idealistic, but to me it's very actually realistic and attainable. I think it's very doable. And, I've, and, and thank you for being one of the people who actually is opening our minds and our hearts to, to what is possible for that. Yeah, yeah. No, you're welcome. Uh, the irony is I'll probably get my ass kicked for trying to do <laughs> <laughs> trying to bring love to the world yeah, yeah gotta get rid of that do, guy right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's actually really interesting because i started studying un you know belief work i learned different techniques of how to uncover unconscious beliefs mm -hmm. and in order to change my environment and it was such a journey i'm like oh you know there is not too much yeah. and then it just opened up pandora's box in a way mm -hmm. because you know we have we're being imprinted from the time we're conceived yeah. then you know our wonderful person bruce lipton talks about epigenetics how our genes carry information of yeah you know what our ancestors went through yep. and my biggest challenge was always i had dreams i had goals i had visions for my life and i could not make them happen mm -hmm. And consciously, I didn't know why, because I consciously totally believed it would work. Yeah. But I had these unconscious, I don't know, patterns, imprints yeah. that were counter opposite. Mm -hmm. And we now know our, that our unconscious mind is about 88 to 94 percent, depending, you know, who's talking about Somewhere it. <laughs> so yeah. it kind of like runs our, our consciousness. Yeah. yeah. So how does your work address what is kind of stored in our unconscious mind? Um, I mean, so similar to what I was saying earlier, whatever somebody comes mm -hmm. with as a problem to see me, mm -hmm. it, that would sort of sit within the realm of the conscious mind. Yeah. Like they're aware of mm -hmm. it, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm not getting along with my husband, my wife, my boss. Yeah. I'm not happy with my mm -hmm. body. I've got this mm -hmm. sickness, I, w whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like they're aware of that. Mm -hmm. But that is access to, as I said, the subconscious, that which they're oblivious to. Mm -hmm. um, it runs their life, but it's nonetheless something that there's not super apparent. Mm -hmm. So, so how do I 
bring that to their awareness is one use the symptoms of their conscious mind, what yeah. they're aware of, as access. Well, what does that mean? You know, mm -hmm. whatever your situation, mm -hmm. what what is the fundamental fear beneath that? Yeah. You know, what what mm -hmm. is that revealing mm -hmm. as a threat response? Really, that's all it is. Like when we look to the external world and we feel something is is a little off or mm -hmm. not the way we want it, which yeah. is is just hilarious if you think about it. Like, you know, I'm the center of the universe yeah. and <laughs> how dare the world not align itself for exactly. my best, you know? But anyway. We want to manifest this. Yeah. <laughs> that's another conversation I love, manifestation. But anyway, um, so, so that world then, once it gets mm -hmm. revealed, mm -hmm. the access to freedom, which is really my fundamental, my my my. I would say my predominant product for mm -hmm. people is the true internal freedom mm -hmm. is to see and investigate the truth of that world mm -hmm. that they're living in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, something that all humans can relate to is at some point in our life and for many people throughout their lives, there's some basic feeling of not enoughness, Yes. right? As mm -hmm. a general, like, you know, mm -hmm. for some people, I'm not good enough. I'm not thin enough. I'm not rich enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not pretty enough. Yes. I'm not young enough, mm -hmm. but it falls into that bracket, right? Yeah. And so that will manifest in all sorts of ways, and it really impacts people's lives mm -hmm. in a very negative and, and harmful way. It can impact relationships, you know, when you're in one or even getting one if you mm -hmm. don't feel that you're enough. Mm -hmm. It can impact your ability to earn money or to hold on to money, to deserve the value that you you really do. Mm -hmm. uh, so once that's revealed as one of the potential what I call context or mm -hmm. the framework that we live within, and we investigate, is that really true? Like, is it really true that who you are is fundamentally mm -hmm. not good enough? Mm -hmm. And some people will actually really fight for it for a while, you yeah. know, because it's been there for three, four, five decades, and yeah. it's genuinely how they feel. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not asking them, is that how you feel? Mm -hmm. I'm asking them, is that true? Mm -hmm. Yeah, As and a, it's been something that we've been probably taught over and over again, and with the media and comparison, that's constantly being reiterated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, yeah, it's not only reinforced externally but mm -hmm. you know it's I, I love using metaphors with actors mm -hmm. because you know I get the pleasure of working with them mm -hmm. but their their actual craft mm -hmm. is to take on belief systems yes. really right so they're mm -hmm. actually reading a screenplay which is just words on paper mm -hmm. and the degree to which they are a talented actor or actress mm -hmm. is the degree to which they embody that character yeah. So, you know, I often use Tom Hanks as an example just because the role that he played was so juxtaposed to who he is in real life, right? In Philadelphia, yes. he plays a mm -hmm. gay man. Mm -hmm. He's a straight man in real life who's dying of AIDS. He's not dying. He doesn't have AIDS mm -hmm. in real life. Yeah. And he won an Academy Award mm -hmm. because he embodied that so well. Mm -hmm. But there's a deeper knowing beneath that every day on set, however long he's shot for, that he knows that's not who he is. Mm -hmm. So similarly, when I work with somebody, it's taking them to that place that is the, the blank canvas prior mm -hmm. to the thought, mm -hmm. prior to the I am not good enough, I am not loved, I am not worthy, whatever it is. It's, that's language. Yeah. But what exists before language? Like when a baby's born, the baby's not lying there going, oh, shit, I'm not good enough, right? Because it, yeah, it doesn't I have really language. Need to earn my, I really need to earn that baby food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Get yourself a job. <laughs> Damn it. So, so this is something yeah. that alone like just in terms of the chronology yeah. of a human being's mm -hmm. life, you see that at some point you didn't have that belief. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you didn't even have language. Yeah. So when language was introduced to us, you know, usually around age one mm -hmm. or two, hence the terrible twos, mm -hmm. now we start to recognize I'm not something. Yeah. And that resistance and that limitation then starts to define mm -hmm. human beings mm -hmm. and they will adapt and develop survival mechanisms. And, you know, for women, oftentimes it's you've got to be pretty, you've got to be sexy. Yeah. You know, for guys, yeah. you've got to be the best and the strongest. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, all these archetypes yeah. that really are just built on a really deep foundation of fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so so long we didn't answer your question, but it's really basically take it down to the subconscious beliefs, mm -hmm. ask them if they're fundamentally true. They never are. Mm -hmm. And then what's on the other side of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Total liberation. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> of course, if you're into that kind of stuff. <laughs> I love it. I, I totally have into If that. you're into yeah. freedom. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to circle back because you said something that I feel like I want to go a little bit deeper into. Mm -hmm surviving versus thriving yeah and uncovering the mental concepts that we've been in that kept us in survival mode yeah and even teachings like just as you know the most popular darwin survival of the fittest mm -hmm. and i feel like there is still such a group conscious imprinting that is going around us yeah so how would you work with a client who is constantly in survival mode constantly in stress mode to Especially when they might be working jobs that are putting a lot of pressure on them. You're working with a lot of people in, in leading positions in companies. Yep. How do you get them out of surviving and into thriving through that work? 
Um, I mean, the same techniques apply, right? Mm. Like really, it's just coming down to basic mental programming, mm. linguistic programming. Mm. So anybody who's in a state of survival, whether they be like a high-end CEO I'm working mm. with or a multi-million dollar paid athlete who's mm. under all sorts of pressure of mm -hmm. literally the spotlights, um, it comes down to these these basic principles mm -hmm. of what what is stress? Yeah. You know, what is pressure? Mm -hmm. I mean, in my world, you know, I use a quote, I say there's no such thing as a stressful situation. Mm -hmm. There's just the stress we bring to a situation. Mm -hmm. So so it really breaks down to understanding the distinction between life mm -hmm. and what what is, you know, mm -hmm. what that that yeah, is the yeah. way things are currently. And how am I interpreting that it's creating a stress response? Mm -hmm. Now, creating a stress response isn't wrong. It doesn't make anyone evil. Yeah. It's just unnecessary. Mm -hmm. So if I'm working with somebody who does have a lot of stress, to me, that is a red flag for they're living in a fundamental world of fear mm -hmm. where everything occurs to them as mm -hmm. a threat response. Mm -hmm. And we are very externally focused, right, as a race, mm -hmm. uh, as a species. We, we, we many, many millennia ago, that or beyond that, or less than, I don't know the exact time frame, it's really irrelevant, <laughs> <Somewhere>. but, <laughs> you know, yeah. externally was really where threat came from, yeah. right? Like, literally, it was life-threatening. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so people became very, very conscious and aware of their surroundings. Mm -hmm. Today, the threat response is, you know, is that person checking my outfit out, mm -hmm. you know, or yeah. is my colleague at the workplace doing mm -hmm. better than me? Mm -hmm. But it's still a threat response. And mm -hmm. that's where survival comes in. Like yeah. if you perceive your external environment as a threat, mm -hmm. then you have to be in survival. Mm -hmm. Conversely, for me, when you start to recognize that the external world is really just a canvas mm -hmm. for you to create in and to contribute to, mm -hmm. and it's less about how do I survive and more how do I contribute, um, then, then it starts to t sort of flip into this thriving mindset yeah. where there's nothing wrong with me I'm okay and this is a big leap of faith right mm -hmm. like I mean people are out there working their asses off doing three four jobs a day yeah. for minimum wage yeah. and they're the people I really tip my cap to mm -hmm. um, but there is nonetheless there is there is freedom to be found to realize if you can trust that mm -hmm. life's got your back yeah. even in the face of complete adversity that may not make sense in the moment it is nonetheless for your greater good. Mm -hmm. It is nonetheless for your evolution and for your growth. Mm -hmm. And that's not easy. I mean, I've literally in the last few days been going through a lot and feeling mm -hmm. a lot. My, mm -hmm. my dog of 13 years passed on Monday. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we're doing this Wednesday. <gasps> Yesterday I was a blubbering gosh. wreck. And, you know, yeah. but to me, even mm -hmm. that is a beautiful expression of the mm -hmm. love that we shared. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's like the greatest gift I've mm -hmm. had. And he taught me so much in terms mm -hmm. of love and acceptance mm -hmm. and, you know, the cliches yeah. of unconditional and acceptance. And how beautiful that you have had that in your life. Right? Absolutely. Mm. Um, so, so you know, a little bit of a segue, but like mm -hmm. even in that, mm -hmm. you know, as much as my friends and people around me who are so loving and supportive have recognized what I'm going through, to me it's a beautiful reflection that's on the other side of the gratitude that mm -hmm. I have for the love mm -hmm. that we shared. Mm -hmm. You know, so likewise in life, when people go through adversity, I'd really love them as much as possible mm -hmm. to try and just take a minute mm -hmm. and not look at it as a real reaction that is more of a survival instinct, mm -hmm. like fearing that everything's going to just fall apart. You know, yeah. the relationship that just ended and the mind wants to go to, I'm never going to meet anyone again, yeah. or the mm -hmm. job that you just lost that now makes you feel like I'm going to lose my home. Or mm -hmm. these are, you know, justified thoughts, but they're nonetheless as they're inaccurate. Mm -hmm. And invariably, you can talk to anyone or we can all speak yeah. from personal experience that three, four, five, six months later, you know, the whole like existence of that event in your life becomes a blessing. Mm -hmm. Now, thank God I left that yeah. relationship yeah. or that yeah. job yeah. fell apart mm -hmm. because now I met the love of my life mm -hmm. in this new job, whatever mm -hmm. it is, yeah. right? So, um, so again, yeah, when people are in an experience of stress, it is fundamentally a threat response. Mm -hmm. And to recognize that nothing externally is actually creating that. Mm -hmm. It is all based on your interpretation mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. this circumstance, not in the circumstance mm -hmm. itself. At least that gives people an element of power. Yeah. You know, if, if, if it really is because of your boss mm -hmm. or because mm -hmm. of your mother-in-law or because mm -hmm. of your bank account, mm -hmm. you feel powerless. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just not. Yeah. It's just not that. Uh, is are there specific tools and maybe there's one that you want to share with us that you give to people so 
you know, they can kind of in a way, because I feel like sometimes it's a muscle that needs to be practiced. If we've mm-hmm. been living a certain pattern for so and so long, yeah. it's kind of like I always say, if you want to look like Arnold, you have to lift your weights daily. If you want to change your pattern, you have yeah. to practice that too. For sure. So are there certain tools that, you know, you give your clients where they can work with maybe even outside the session? Maybe there's something you can share with us. Um. Yes and no. I mean, uh, Mm -hmm. not to poo-poo your question, I'm not much of a tools guy because once people start Mm -hmm. to see that, you know, there's nothing wrong, Mm -hmm. then tools become a little redundant. Then Mm -hmm. it is just a practice really of constantly investigating what's triggering me right now mm. you know what so so that would perhaps be a tool is yes, just be in the inquiry yeah. right yeah. be be mm-hmm. ask yourself a question mm-hmm. take a minute mm-hmm. i mean the one takeaway i really wish people would really get is mm-hmm. slow down mm-hmm. you know use a metaphor of like a fedex truck that's going around its neighborhood delivering like hundreds of packages mm-hmm. but the way he does it is at like 20 miles an hour yeah like the 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 ability to engage with each home mm-hmm. and get that parcel to the right mm-hmm. home, let alone mm-hmm. you know per- perfectly placed at the doorstep, yeah. it's completely diminished mm-hmm. and it's compromised. Mm-hmm. Likewise, people are trying to create an exquisite life, or at least that's what they claim, mm-hmm. but they're going a million miles a minute, yeah. right? And so, just to start to understand the logic of mm-hmm. if if I'm going to create a life of grace, then my my the way I conduct myself has to be graceful. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so that's probably the biggest takeaway with mm-hmm. anyone I speak mm-hmm. with is to slow down, mm-hmm. take a beat, yeah. learn to breathe. Uh, I just I, f- I love all the paradoxes in life, you know, and I, I help people understand <laughs> that everybody's in such a hurry to get mm-hmm. to somewhere where they don't have to be in a hurry. Uh-huh. Yes, I <laughs> love just, that. Yes, it it's just so makes true, no freaking right? sense, right? Yeah. It's like so, you know, that which is available mm-hmm. right now is mm-hmm. what you're actually looking for. But because mm-hmm. you're just that split second preoccupied with the idea that your life is actually where you're going, not mm-hmm. where you are, mm-hmm. that introduces stress. Yes. Thank you. I love that. So we got an amazing tool, people. Slow down. Yeah. Take a breath. With everything. Yeah. You know, it's like, and especially, you know, with this movie Heal that I've been uh, um, helping promote with some mm-hmm. Q&As, and it's just such a privilege to be alongside some of these other teachers, and it's mm-hmm. an honor to help Kelly and Adam get this out there and hopefully impact millions of people's lives. Yeah. You know, something as simple as chewing your mm-hmm. food. Mm-hmm. I mean, it. it yeah. people eat because they're invariably trying to get rid of hunger. Mm-hmm. Right, it's what I don't want because I'm in a hurry to get somewhere. Yeah. Now that cascade of events is is it's unbelievable the impact it has that people are usually mm-hmm. oblivious to. Meaning, mm-hmm. if you're in a state of stress or fight or flight and you're engaged in your sympathetic nervous system, mm-hmm. your digestion is not a priority as far as the body's concerned because it's feeling the stress that you're under. And mm-hmm. so it's like, okay, we're going to distribute the resources of your body, your blood, to your muscles. Mm-hmm. So forget about digestion. It's truly not important right now. Mm -hmm. So then what happens is the food doesn't get digested properly. So you're not getting the full nourishment. Secondly, Mm -hmm. in Ayurveda, which is part of my work, you know, Mm -hmm. we get AMA, A-M-A, which is the term given to undigested food. It's like Mm -hmm. toxic food. It's Mm -hmm. like imagine a fireplace where you've Mm -hmm. been burning wood Mm -hmm. for a while and it's the stuff that doesn't get burnt, you know. And it just sits there and it collects in all the subtle channels Mm -hmm. of the body. And then that creates is the precursor to inflammatory responses and disease. Now... Mm -hmm. If you can reverse that whole process, what needs to happen? Slow down, relax, Mm -hmm. chew your food. Mm -hmm. Your body's like, oh, we're not in a life-threatening situation Mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. We're not driving on the four or five at 75 miles an hour trying Mm -hmm. to navigate five (laughs) lanes of idiots. (laughs) No offense to LA drivers, but yeah, somewhat accurate. Um, And simultaneously digest Mm -hmm. this, you know, Mm -hmm. salad that I picked Mm -hmm. up at the to-go aisle or whatever. And I get it. Everybody's literally trying to do the best Mm -hmm. they can Mm -hmm. but if you want to have a more full experience of Mm -hmm. life and have a more thriving experience of life then there is so much to be learned by slowing down Mm -hmm. putting your body into a state of relaxation which itself is a healing process digest your food by chewing it properly Mm -hmm. and allowing your digestive system to do what it does Mm -hmm. Um, and then you actually garner more energy you become Mm -hmm. more productive and Mm -hmm. it's a it's a virtuous cycle Mm -hmm. versus a vicious cycle Yeah. Yeah. yeah And I'm also, as you're speaking, I'm, I'm I'm wondering about, you know, conscious languaging because we have so much. And I used to do that, too. I used to run my errands mm-hmm, and then I would right. be so stressed <laughs> out at the end of the day. I'm like, I've been running all day. Right, right. And right. then I just changed it. I'm like, I'm doing my errands. Yeah. And all of a sudden doing my errands became so much relaxing yeah i wasn't exhausted at the end of the day it's um it's language i love language i mean ultimately Mm -hmm. my work is about Mm -hmm. reprogramming and programming Mm -hmm. is language so you know even the expression of i'm getting there Mm -hmm. 
you know, or I'm hanging in there through mm-hmm. a tough time, you know. Yeah. But hanging in there means you're yeah. actually holding on to something, yeah. which is yeah. itself yeah. is the suffering versus mm-hmm. allowing things yeah. to flow and let them yeah. go. Or deadline. Mm-hmm. You're dead by the time you get to your deadline. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is. I love the. Yeah, it's an exploration into yeah. like some of these terms that we use. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's like a sunrise, mm-hmm. sunset. Uh, the sun's not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing, right? Like yeah. so. Yeah, we 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 fall prey to language because mm-hmm. it's been there for so long. Mm-hmm. And again, it's not it's no one's fault, but it's just mm-hmm. perhaps just take a minute when you slow down, you can investigate these things a little, mm-hmm. you know, clearer mm-hmm. uh, versus just living this world of assumptions. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you said, just run errands and think that no, right. no, this isn't it, but I'm getting there. Yeah. It's like okay, mm-hmm. well, good luck. I've never met anyone actually in their future. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're always where you are. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you just brought something up. You've been practicing Ayurveda for quite some time, right? I have, yeah. And learning about how our beliefs also affect our health. Mm-hmm. Have you seen shifts in your patients, clients who are doing Ayurveda once you start doing the mental work with them? Yes, and I'd actually assert further is that I don't see shifts unless they do the mental mm-hmm. work. You know, it may be at best transitory, meaning they may get mm-hmm. some physical relief. But mm-hmm. if they don't do the inner work, and honestly, mm-hmm. in the true traditions of Ayurveda, like the Vajyas, who are the mm-hmm. the teachers, the the practitioners, their predominant skill was in the manas, is the mind, mm-hmm. is in changing mm-hmm. the structure of the mind. Because to me, the body is the manifestation of that. Yeah. So if there's something going on symptomatically in the body and to the point of you know, sickness, real mm-hmm. sickness, mm-hmm. it is a reflection of the lack of ease or the mm-hmm. dis-ease mm-hmm. that is existing in somebody's emotional state. Mm-hmm. So if you're not in a state of ease, going back to what I was saying earlier, mm-hmm. you're not going to be digesting life or yeah. your food properly, so therefore you don't process, you build mm-hmm. up toxicity. Mm-hmm. In the film, I actually talk about the six stages of disease, and the first mm-hmm. stage is accumulation. Mm-hmm. So again, it speaks to all of this. It's just very logical. This is why I love Ayurveda. It's not mm-hmm. someone's system that they mm-hmm. made up. It's all based on the principles of Mother Nature. Yeah. So you accumulate toxicity, whether it be emotional, psychological, or mm-hmm. physiological. Mm-hmm. You are on the first rung of the ladder to sickness. Mm-hmm. Now, is it easy to constantly clear? No, of course. We're, we're bombarded these days. Mm-hmm. Um, but at least be mindful of it. Be conscious mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. You know, even something as simple as cleaning out your closet. Yeah. Why does that feel good? Because you're removing, you're, you're mm-hmm. making space. Yeah. And space gives clarity. Yeah, it gives a new that. lightness mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. feel energized. Mm-hmm. Now, if you think of doing that same exercise, psychologically, emotionally, and physically, mm-hmm. it's total liberation. Yeah. Yeah, it's letting go of what no longer serves us, what is yeah. not longer in alignment with us. Yeah, and now there's certain things you can see, which is where we start, mm-hmm. where the real power is and what you can't see, mm-hmm. right? Now, that's they're the, like we were talking about earlier, the subconscious mm-hmm. patterns, the mm-hmm. things that got ingrained at a very young age, the survival mm-hmm. instincts that we developed as a mm-hmm. kid, you know, and some kids, let's face it, you know, go through really tough mm-hmm. times. And I know yeah. many of my clients, it doesn't have to be total abuse, but maybe it's mm-hmm. in an, a, an environment where there's a bit of hostility, parents mm-hmm. scream, there's divorce, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. people go through all sorts of stuff and they learn to survive and then that sort of starts to define Mm -hmm. them and and that's an accumulation of these toxins albeit Mm -hmm. on an emotional and psychological Mm -hmm. level Mm -hmm. that then inhibit their ability to truly thrive and love life amazing love it yeah can we talk a little bit more about ayurveda of course we talk about whatever you like (laughs) (laughs) might Um, not have the answers but (laughs) we'll, we'll, we'll just go for it yeah um because there's three different types you talk about in Ayurveda, right? There's three different doshas, yeah. three different qualities doshas. of energy, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And do you find there is a specific characteristic to the, peop- the person who is more Avita or more a Kappa? Yes, in terms of their personality? In terms of personality 100%. or even you know mental constructs, going back to the mental constructs. Yeah, so if you look at, and again, why it's such a beautiful system is because it truly aligns with what Mother Nature is already mm-hmm. displaying. So Vata is predominantly air. It's mm-hmm. a combination. So there's five elements that come together to create these three mm-hmm. qualities of energy that we see in the body and in life. So Vata is a combination of space, which mm-hmm. is really the container, and then mm-hmm. air. So if you think of the wind, yeah. The wind is very light. Mm-hmm. It's constantly moving. Mm-hmm. It's drying and it's cold. Mm-hmm. So then people who have a vata disposition mm-hmm. are going to be light, meaning they have a light frame. They constantly move. They're mm-hmm. very restless. Trying to get a vata person to do meditation, good luck. <laughs> um, and they're always feeling the cold mm-hmm. and they're dry, meaning mm-hmm. externally and internally. Mm-hmm. So skin, hair, eyes, internally, constipation is a tendency, mm-hmm. all of that. Mm-hmm. There's a dryness. So... 
we want to balance through opposites. So that's mm-hmm. vata. Mm-hmm. Their constitution psychologically goes along with that. Mm-hmm. So what is that? It's restless. Mm-hmm. So they tend to have very active minds. They tend to be very mobile. They move in and out of situations very quickly. Mm-hmm. It could be a relationship, could be a job. Um, they tend to be very future driven. So there's a lot of anxiety with mm-hmm. batter types. Mm-hmm. Also, just even physiologically, the correlation is fascinating where their myelin sheath, which is the sort of the padding around yeah. the neuron or the mm-hmm. nerves, is very thin in vata. Oh, so they're very sensitive, very thin, um, very mm-hmm. thin skinned. Mm-hmm. So for that reason, they tend to, you know, be very easily reactive. Mm-hmm. They don't have much of a buffer. Mm-hmm. So, um, but on the flip side, you know, they're very gregarious. They're great entertainers mm-hmm. and, you know, they're spontaneous, right? Like, let's go on a trip. They're like, yeah, let's go, you know, because they, they have that capacity yeah. to move very mm-hmm. quickly. Um, then psychologically for the pitta person, mm-hmm. pitta is more fire as an element. So fire people tend to, not surprisingly, have inflammatory mm-hmm. disorders. Mm-hmm. So in the body, that can lead to big imbalances like celiacs, Crohn's, okay. IBS, very sort of associated mm-hmm. with the stomach mm-hmm. and acid. Mm-hmm. And then in the skin, rashes, athletes, um, furt and stuff like that, where there's this sort of excess heat in the mm-hmm. body. And then obviously skin, acne and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, psychologically, Think of heat and yeah. emotions. What are you going to come up with? Mm-hmm. Hostility, anger, frustration, mm-hmm. judgment, mm-hmm. criticism. Um, the blessing and curse of somebody who's a pizza predominant constitution is that they bring light. So if mm-hmm. you think of a dark room and you bring mm-hmm. a flame, which is the fire, oh, yeah. you can see. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? They are incredibly detail oriented. Mm-hmm. But that also means that they tend towards perfectionism. Mm -hmm. You live with a pizza person, you definitely know where you should and shouldn't put the toothbrush. Oh, that's amazing. Right. So so there's going to be a lot of self-criticism with pizza Mm -hmm. people. So they need a lot of more forgiveness, just Mm -hmm. like the Vata person needs Mm -hmm. a lot more grounding and love and security Mm -hmm. to make them sort of dissipate the anxiety and fear. Pizza people need to chillax, you know, Mm -hmm. just take your time. Don't Mm -hmm. be so hard on yourself and others. And the last, the kapha person is earth and water. You mm-hmm. know, and I always use our dear friend Oprah as an example. She's mm-hmm. very kapha. And okay. kapha people, earth and water, you think about, you mm-hmm. combine that. Mm-hmm. It's the densest mm-hmm. of the elements. But there's a smoothness. Like it's like a mud. Yeah. Yeah. So they have the biggest frames, mm-hmm. very strong joints, great mm-hmm. thick hair, mm-hmm. big eyes, you know, beautiful skin that's super, mm-hmm. super silky. Mm-hmm. But what are they going to struggle with? The accumulative disorders. Vata mm-hmm. is the degenerative disorders, okay. which leads to the Alzheimer's and the osteoporosis okay. and mm-hmm. arthritis. Whereas the kaffirs, mm-hmm. because they have earth and water, they tend to hold. Mm-hmm. So they're going to hold on to... Uh, cholesterol, Mm -hmm. obesity, stuff that is basically collecting in their Mm -hmm. life. They converse to the Vata people who are future-based, they tend to be Mm past-based. They have memories like an elephant. They they remember everything, but for that reason, they tend to hold on to Mm -hmm. things. So what are they going to go towards? More depression. Yeah. Um, they will hold on to things way too long that doesn't serve them anymore. Mm. So it could be a relationship, it could be a job that they really shouldn't be in it anymore. Yeah. But because they're heavy, unlike our vatas, they tend to not be able to move so readily. They need a kick in the ass. Mm-hmm. They need to be motivated. Mm-hmm. They, they actually benefit from stimulants. They mm-hmm. can drink coffee and mm-hmm. have spicy foods. Whereas our vata counterparts, any stimulants for them are going to create more imbalance because yeah. they need to just slow yeah. down. So. This is so fascinating. I'm thinking, <laughs> it is, you know, it? how cool is that when when you know about these body types and you yeah. know, you know, this body type leads more towards this, which also, which also results in this kind of a potential for a certain disorder yep. where our body gets out of order. Yep. And I'm so much about preventative medicine and not waiting until we get sick to, mm-hmm. to ship things, no matter if it's, you know, on the physical level, mental, emotional level. So how awesome is it to find out what is your body type yeah. And and to work on, you know, any kind of I'm just going to use the word negative, negative constructs that are connected to that body type with like yeah. anger or impatience or whatever it is before we actually it actually express itself in the physical. Yeah, I know. And that's, that's why, I, you know, I can remember I got into Ayurveda in 2000, 2001. Mm-hmm. And at the time I was actually doing training for um, a VIP couple here, actors mm-hmm. who were traveling around the world. And I had the pleasure of, you know taking mm-hmm. care of their bodies and making them look mm-hmm. pretty for five years. And mm-hmm. I really got into wanting other methodologies to help. Mm-hmm. So I studied Pilates and became a Pilates instructor. I'd already done all my exercise physiology mm-hmm. and regular sort of fitness mm-hmm. training stuff. And then I went to do yoga training and become a yoga teacher. And it was during that that the teacher brought in an Ayurvedic practitioner mm-hmm. 
for one afternoon just to give us a lecture on some of yeah. these basic yeah. um, principles. And I can remember sitting there and it was just, you know, for me as a pizza person, so I'm mm. more that sort of detail okay. oriented, I've mm -hmm. studied all of the, you know, self-help and how to improve mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. So I sat there and I was like, finally, someone knows what the hell they're talking mm -hmm. about, you know, like because yeah. it was intuitive and it's mother nature based. It's mm -hmm. not like man-made system. Mm -hmm. And um, so f to have that as sort of a, a feather in mm -hmm. my cap of mm -hmm. being able to help people because as soon as someone walks in, I already know by just looking at them yeah. what is their predominant constitution. Mm -hmm. And that gives me a great insight into mm -hmm. how they're going to process mm -hmm. uh, whatever circumstances yeah. in life. Yeah. So it's really, it is about mm -hmm. understanding patterns. Mm -hmm. You know, really I love to de detect these sort mm -hmm. of tendencies mm -hmm. that humans have. None of it's wrong. There's mm -hmm. no judgment in my mm -hmm. world. But if you can understand you have a tendency mm -hmm. towards something, mm -hmm then you can be more accountable for it. You yeah. can be more responsible yeah. as opposed to a victim of it, not knowing what the hell's mm -hmm. going on. Thank you. I love that. So what am I? You're going to be predominantly pizza vata. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So most people have a dual constitution. Okay. It's not, you know, you're going to predominate with one usually, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's invariably, a, it's a dual constitution. Mm -hmm. Most people sort of have a two, two, two qualities. Awesome. So what do I have to look at? Well, for but you, double, what do you remember from, thing. yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Vata Pitta, you know, mm -hmm. honestly, most people these days are going to be Vata imbalance, okay. right? So what that means is whatever your constitution is, Vata is the outlier on the top, mm -hmm. right? So we're driven by mm -hmm. right now, excess stimulation mm -hmm. and people are just like constantly on devices, travel, air mm -hmm. travel, particularly, mm -hmm. you know, when you're up in a plane, mm -hmm. it's very drying, mm -hmm. changing time zones, there's no routine there. So in today's society, we tend towards a vata imbalance. Mm -hmm. So regardless of whether you're vata, if you're vata with a vata imbalance, you really know about it and you're going to mm -hmm. struggle. If you're pitta with a vata imbalance, it's kind of like think of, you know, bellows on a fireplace. Mm -hmm. So even though your vata may be high, it's like you're blowing air across mm -hmm. the flame mm -hmm. so it may manifest as excess heat in the yeah, body yeah. and that can show up physiologically or psychologically mm -hmm. Kapha people, they actually ironically benefit from vata. You know, like someone okay. like an Oprah is going to age mm -hmm. incredibly well. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, because <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so Kapha people have got that going for them. But then, you know, they're going to struggle with their own things. So yeah. so it um, for you, you know, slowing down, mm -hmm. again, it all seems very sort of general but mm -hmm. specific to you, mm -hmm. you know, slowing down. Warm oils for your skin are incredibly mm -hmm. nourishing Amazing. for vata. Mm -hmm. um, warm sort of comfort mothering foods mm -hmm. for your mm -hmm. digestion. Mm -hmm. uh, chewing again so that you can really get the maximum mm -hmm. amount of nourishment mm -hmm. from it. Um, plenty of rest and good routine. Vatas yeah. really need routine. And that speaks to mainly mm -hmm. bedtime and waking time and then mm -hmm. mealtimes. If you mm -hmm. keep those sort yeah. of, you know, what time I go to bed, breakfast, lunch, and mm -hmm. dinner, and what time I mm -hmm. wake up as those five consistent, mm -hmm. then that really helps to keep Vata sort of in check. Good. I'm glad I'm very raised in a very German structured way yeah. <laughs> because I have a lot of structure in my life and yeah. a lot of, I'm really attached to my schedule. Yeah. So, But that will also sense. create imbalance in your yeah. pizza, which is very yeah. detail oriented and it's got to <laughs> right. be this way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just, it's going to get you either working way. Working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That of is course. amazing. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. so fascinating. And it's 5,000 years old. It's, not, it's yeah. nothing I came up mm -hmm. with. You know, it's yeah. just, it's like, yeah. oh, wow. If you yeah. just understand the qualities of the elements, mm -hmm. then you start to intuitively just understand mm -hmm. why things happen the way they happen. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful compliment to the work mm -hmm. that I do. You know, it's, yeah. I, it's a very small part, mm -hmm. but it's sort of so integrated in the way that I work mm -hmm. and I look at somebody mm -hmm. that... It's just, it's inherent so mm -hmm. that when they're telling me whatever their woes are and their problems or whatever they work on, it doesn't even have to be problems. Like yeah. I'm not, you know, I've got incredibly talented, successful people that come to my door mm -hmm. and it may be just that there's no such a problem, but rather they know they could be realizing more potential, yeah. you know, and it's yeah. like, how can we access that mm -hmm. as opposed to working on mm -hmm. what's wrong? Mm -hmm. How can we actually maximize the, the talent set that I have mm -hmm. that I feel right now is sort of being a little bit um, inhibited. Amazing. Yeah. I actually would love to come full circle and maybe there's, I don't know, a, your own personal, like a, an own personal story you want to share or someone you worked with where it's okay to share the story. Yeah. Um, <coughs> how, you know, we, it's it, it feels like you're doing so much. I see you like the vision, I'm like, you're, you're realigning. Okay, you're walking this way. Let's just realign you a little bit. Mm -hmm. So share a story with us where the work you're doing or give us an example where the work you're doing, how it changed someone's approach Gosh. to what they're doing i know there's probably yeah, so, so many, many. i mean so. i do like sports because mm -hmm. you know everybody can relate and at mm -hmm. some level even if somebody doesn't consider themselves a sports fan you know 
they're probably going to watch mm-hmm. s- some sport or they're married to or their brother mm-hmm. is or their dad. And so you, we get involved. There's a degree of fun in that competition. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got so many. I can remember one baseball player, um, he called me and I'd worked with him for a little while. Mm-hmm. This is Major League Baseball, so he's at the highest level. And he was getting a lot of stick from his teammates because mm-hmm. he hadn't hit a Rome home run for almost a season which you know for yeah. a for a ball player is a long time even yeah. the smaller guys yeah. who aren't necessarily mm-hmm. power hitters mm-hmm. you know they they generally will get like mm-hmm. you know just a handful of mm-hmm. hits the, the big guys are hitting you know 30 mm-hmm. plus so anyway he was just really frustrated and even though his friends are doing it in a teasing way you know mm-hmm. nonetheless was starting to get mm-hmm. to him and, I, and i'll never forget um he called me and he was sitting in the parking lot um uh, at the stadium mm-hmm. And we chatted for like probably only 20, 25 minutes. And what I did for him, which I do for anybody, is whenever there's a fear Mm -hmm. or a concern, it's the first step is acceptance. And so I took him to a place where I said, you know, I totally got his frustration and I get Mm -hmm. that he wants to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But I said, what if, what if I told you that for the rest of your life, you're not going to hit a home run? Mm. Could you survive? Are you going to be okay? And I use a lot of humor, especially with my yeah, athletes, because yeah. they like to yeah. get shit. And I said, you know, or do I need to call your mother? <laughs> right? Okay. You know, in a loving, gestural yeah, way. Yeah. But like, you know, basically to help him understand that he's going to be okay. The mm-hmm. guy's making millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Of course, this is something that he would prefer. Mm-hmm. But to me, what was holding him back was the resistance to the fact that he was not okay with that he Mm -hmm. hadn't, right? Mm -hmm. So now we can get into the physiology, but the, you know, fundamentally, if there's resistance in the mind, the body's going to carry tension. Mm -hmm. A muscle that carries tension is a slow muscle, Mm -hmm. right? If you think about it, if I'm tense, and in fact, before I move, I have to release Mm -hmm. the the action of the muscle Mm -hmm. in order to move, which is why so many athletes will talk about how breathing is such an important part of Mm -hmm. their process so that they can find relaxation. So what I'm doing for him at that point is helping him find such a degree of relief that his whole system can relax. So it took him a minute, but he finally got that the true answer was, yes, it's not what he wants, but he would be okay if he never hit a home run again Mm -hmm. in his life. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, he's found freedom. Wow. Literally three hours later, when the game Mm -hmm. starts, his first at bat, he hits a home run. Wow, that's amazing. (laughs) I yeah. love that story. And I've, I really am so blessed. And again, mm-hmm. I can't claim stake to it because mm-hmm. I'm really helping them see something yeah. they have. Yeah. I'm just a guide. But, you know, I've got hundreds of stories like that. And, mm-hmm. you know, even people that do have pretty serious sort of well-developed diseases mm-hmm. that once they let go of the internal fight mm-hmm. that they have with themselves, especially yeah. autoimmune disorders, yes. then their whole system, I mean, I've literally seen people's faces change shape subtly, oh but you know, God. somebody who's got big burrows on their yeah. forehead or in between their eyes, you know, the relaxation they feel by letting go of all of that anger or the mm-hmm. frustration or the fear that was developed as a child, mm-hmm. literally their physiology can finally just let go. Amazing. And, you know, and certainly for an athlete that I work with like that, it's, you know, it translates yeah. into huge mm-hmm. performance. So That's so awesome. I love yeah. it. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Of course. Yeah, it's fun. Um, and we have to actually wrap up over here. But before we do, let us know how we can find you. Let us, our audience know how to get in touch with you. Um, the, the easiest way is, you know, through the old traditional website, which mm-hmm. is just my name, petercrone.com, P-E-T-E-R-C-R-O-N-E. Uh, or equally easy to remember mm-hmm. is bealive.com, mm-hmm. uh, which is just my company name. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can, you know, put in an email, do the usual stuff. I'm actually developing awesome. some pretty fun products right now in terms Amazing. of online programs and mm-hmm. books and um, hoping to get that out here in the mm-hmm. new future so uh yeah awesome we always Thank love you. to help and if i can do anything to mm-hmm. facilitate someone's life and go more from a state of surviving to one of mm-hmm. thriving i'm all about it i love it thank you so much you're so welcome and everybody also heal is going to run for another couple of weeks i think in theaters i'm actually theaters, uh, yeah. i don't know if when people will hear this but i'm actually going to be at the beverly hills the lemley music hall on mm-hmm. sunday okay. um the five o'clock showing we're doing a q a panel after that mm-hmm. um so if anyone's in the area and they want to come along they've been mm-hmm. fun uh but yeah, okay. it's and go to healdocumentary.com um, and it will show all the screenings both around the mm-hmm. States and actually around the world yeah. now. So amazing. it's a pretty fun journey to it's, be a part of. Yeah, and it's such an amazing movie. I saw it about when it first came out, I saw it on opening weekend in LA and it's awesome, awesome, awesome. So go and see it and see Peter in it. Yeah. And just remember just to slow down and not take yeah. shit so seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and with that final word, yeah. thank you so You're much so for welcome. being on the show Pleasure today, to Peter. Here. It was such an amazing conversation. Yeah, well, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome.
All right, Rebel Hearts, that's it for today. Go to ChristyReeves.com, sign up for our newsletter to stay updated on all the show notes and everything that we have going on over here. And if you like that interview, which I am sure you did, go to iTunes, leave us a ratings and reviews because that helps us continue to bring amazing guests onto the show. And we'll see you again next Wednesday at 3 p.m. And remember to rebel on. In the future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com.